Hello, everyone. I am Gwen Preston from West Red Lake Gold Mines, and I want to tell you about why I'm excited about where our company stands today as an investment opportunity for gold investors. So we do. I am going to make some forward-looking statements. It takes two whole slides to get through those, but this is where I want to just speak for a minute. We are in a pretty exciting gold environment. Gold is, you know, above $2,600 today as I'm recording this. Um, and I think there's a lot of reason to believe gold is going to go higher from here. In a rising gold environment, what is the best place to put your money? In my estimation and my experience as a gold investor, um, the best balance of upside and managed risk is with companies that are putting, that are putting new gold mines into production and you get the best a combination of the upside and managed risk when it's an experienced team that is going from either zero production or modest production to becoming like a real gold producer. And that's where West Red Lake is. So that's what's called the golden runway. That's where you, the stock should get this re-rate from spending money to producing gold. And when you produce gold into a $2,600 gold environment, hopefully you're going to make money doing that. That's a stock re-rate opportunity. That is the thesis for West Red Lake Gold. So what I want to do now is just run through how we're doing this mine into construction process and how we're managing the risks that are inherent in that process. So this is our goal. Uh, the project that we have is the Madsen mine. We are building it. We are putting it into production. Our goal is to produce next year. Um, and every good mining company starts with one good mine. The, pic the person who's pictured here is Mr. Frank Justra. He is a founding shareholder and the single largest shareholder of our company. And uh, West Red Lake is one of his key vehicles to ride this gold environment. Quick backstory on the Madsen mine, because this helps you understand why we're able to do what we're doing. Madsen is a mine in Red Lake, Ontario, really high grade gold district. It operated for several decades, produced 2 million ounces of gold at a rock grading 9 grams, so high grade mine, uh, a shaft all the way down to almost 1300 meters. These historic miners knew what they were doing. They knew they were into a good thing. Then the gold price fell off in the 70s. The mine shut down. It had gotten deep and full of water. Um, then there were two restart efforts, one um, in the late 90s, and then the pertinent one is the one that happened from 2015 to 2022. Another company, our predecessor company, did a lot of good work. They drilled this thing, they did a feasibility study, they um, did the permitting, they financed the construction, they built, they rebuilt the mine, including a brand new mill, um, and then they went into operation. Unfortunately, they made some missteps along the way, and that operation only lasted for 14 months. But they did invest $350 million into our asset just before we bought it. And then we bought it out of the bankruptcy proceedings. And that's what the last part of this timeline is here. We basically bought this asset for $6.5 million cash, um, plus shares and a 1% NSR. This is a little capture. We bought a lot. This is, I mean, our president and CEO, Shane, likes to say that looking back, he thinks that people will call this the deal of the decade because for six and a half million dollars, we bought a huge amount of infrastructure at a permitted mine that has 1.7 million ounces of indicated resource grading seven and a half grams per ton gold. So we bought a lot for not a lot of money. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the fact that this mine didn't work with our prior operator. There are reasons for that. I mean, the really short version of those reasons is, is that they were delivering material to the mill that was much lower grade than they expected, and their costs were higher than their feasibility study had outlined. Why was the material lower grade than expected? Well, a large part of it was insufficient definition drilling. They had a good hold on the envelope where the gold sits, and you can see that first they didn't have a great hold on it. That's the blue shape here. Then they got a better hold on it. That's the purple shape. But again, to simplify, really what they did was go in and mine that entire purple shape, but high grade veiny gold system like the gold in Red Lake, Ontario, requires that you hammer that purple shape with definition drill holes so you can define the lenses of gold within that shape and that enables you to mine those lenses and identify the waste within the alteration package and not process it. 
They mined the whole package. That's why they delivered lower grade material to their mill than they expected. That was the crux of their problem. We, to address that, are tightening up drill spacing from 20 meters to six meters. Six meter spaces between the drill holes through our entire mineable inventory before we get there. Um, this is the fundamental thing that we are doing that is differing, um, that is gonna make this mine work um, when it stumbled not very long ago. This is just one cross section of some drill results to give you a bit of insight into how that's working. All of the um, ellipses on those drill traces are intercepts and you can see that they're lining up nicely with the resource model. They are also in quite a few places identifying new mineralization. You can see a bunch of those purple spots are extending the zone that's just the yellow blobs there on the right, extending it down this picture. So we're increasing the confidence, we're knowing where the gold is, and we're defining a bit of new gold as we go along with our definition drill program. There's a lot of other de-risking processes that we are going through to increase our odds of success when we restart this Madsen mine next year. Key among those is the test mining program. We want to, there's a range of environments underground at Madsen. Um, there's old stopes, some of them are backfilled, some of them are not backfilled. There's resource right up against those stopes. There's resource that's not near old mining areas. We are underground right now and we are test mining in that range of environments because we want to, when we start mining, we want to mine knowing what the best method is for each of those environments because that reduces risk and increases efficiency and enables a safe mining situation. So we're down there. There's also an opportunity to potentially unlock some resource that's hidden away right now around the old stopes. There's this two meter buffer that's excluded from the resource because there hasn't been a test mining program to show that you can mine that area safely. So we're hoping to unlock new resources by figuring out how to mine up to those old stopes. We think it's possible, but we have to get in there and do it. And we're making sure that our mine plan is informed with data and experience, not with guesswork. There's a whole lot that's going on on the mine site. This waterfall chart is one way to try and capture that. The first is what I was talking about, infill, definition, and expansion drilling fundamental to our process. We're doing a lot of underground development. There are two crews underground at all times at the Madsen mine right now. They are driving new tunnels to give us access for that definition drill program and to set us up, give us access to the places where we will mine when we turn this asset on next year. So underground development, really important in an underground mine to do underground development ahead of time so that when you start mining, you have lots of options for where to go and you have good confidence in the resource in all of those places. It's also a whole bunch of surface infrastructure projects that are underway, like putting in a mine dry, putting in a workforce accommodations, a camp on site, doing a tailings dam lift. We're doing all of these things so that when we restart, we have an efficient, a well-oiled machine, so to speak, because inefficiency creates cost. And when I said at the beginning, the prior operators, two real stumbles were dilution, so lower grade material and higher costs. They hadn't had the opportunity to do a bunch of the capital projects on surface that make it a well-oiled machine. So we are trying to make it a well-oiled machine before we turn it on through a bunch of these infrastructure projects. Connection Drift is another big capital project, a $10 million tunnel to connect the two sides of the mine that weren't previously connected underground. That's gonna enable much more efficient and safer and better for the local community um, ways of moving material out of the mine and to the mill. Uh, and the bulk sample there, that's the test mining um, process. So these are all of the things that are underway, pushing us towards restart. And our goal is to do that next year. Why should we do all of this work? Because of the re-rate that I mentioned at the beginning, right? The reason to put a mine into production is that a stock should get re-rated as it goes from explorer to developer to financed developer to junior producer and then maybe beyond if they acquire additional assets and grow your multiple that you get on your net asset value rises and so these are just two ways of looking at that the, the chart on the left shows the multiple that you get for your net asset value 
and it goes up when you become a producer. That's because you go from needing money to making money, assuming you are successful at your mine. And the one on the right shows the value that the market gives you per total number of ounces in the ground. The ounces in the ground are worth more if you're actively mining them compared to if they're simply sitting in the ground. So that's the West Red Lake story. That's the West Red Lake investment thesis. This is our share structure, which is important to end with. This man is Mr. Shane Williams. He's our president and CEO. He is a deeply experienced mine engineer who's built, dozen, who's built over a dozen mines around the world, Turkey, Greece, Sweden, Quebec. Um, he's leading this charge. His experience is absolutely fundamental to why we believe that we are going to be able to restart this mats and mine with success. And Shane Williams and Frank Justra got together envisioning Madsen as the foundational asset of a company that they want to grow into a mid-tier Canadian producer. They want to demonstrate success at Madsen and then step ahead, acquire additional assets and repeat the process. So we want to do that increase in production, give investors the opportunity to ride that re-rate multiple times. That's the vision for the company. And we're just at the beginning of that path right now.